Hi everyone, welcome to part four of the Learning FreeCAD for Beginners, where we're teaching the fundamentals of FreeCAD. We're doing that in a practical way by understanding workflows. In today's tutorial, we'll be going through a workflow that allows us to trace an image via importing it in the image workbench, whether it be a photograph, an illustration, etc. The image workbench will allow us to load up the reference images on the different planes and scale them to the correct scale, which will then allow us to trace them in the sketcher. We'll be using standard sketcher geometry, including construction geometry, which allows us to constrain our sketch much more easier than laying a number of datum constraints down, especially when we have an awkward shape. We'll then be outputting that sketch to a part design workflow to create the finished object. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to trace a exhaust flange. So we've got the finished output on the left and the sketch has been created on the right. We'll be doing this from an illustration of exhaust flange with known dimensions just for the circle in the middle. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. When it comes to sketching external images in FreeCAD, we need to take account of composition, scale, and clarity of our image. So for instance, this image is perfect if we want to trace this object because we've taken a picture of the image directly above it and we're looking straight down on the image so we haven't got any perspective issues there. The only thing this is missing is a scale. Now I can take that scale from the original object because I've got it here in front of me and I know the dimensions of the object. But if we didn't, we need a scale in there. So placing like a ruler or something like a coin, we can actually get the scale there, but we need to position it properly to get the correct scale for our perspective. Using objects such as this, we have the scale on the base of where that object sits. This is no good because this object has depth then our scale will be out. It'll be much better to place the scale on a piece of paper and place that on top of the object. The other thing that we have to be wary of is how we're taking the shot and how we're setting up that shot. So for instance, this one, you can see the sides of the object. We're not directly above it. We're not shooting directly down on the object. So our perspective as well as our rotation is out. For this video, I'm using an illustration of a flange. So this is an exhaust flange. We're going to be using that image, which is going to be available for you to download. And through this, we're going to be learning basic sketching and also how to use construction geometry. To start tracing, we'll be utilizing a workbench called the image workbench. First, we need a new document in FreeCAD. So use this icon here or file new. We're going to come over to the image workbench and you'll find that the image workbench is a simplistic workbench of just three icons here. The first one creates an image and places it in a new tab. We'll be using these two here. So this one is create an image plane. This will create an image plane on the different planes that are available in FreeCAD. Click that and we'll select the image, which at the moment is a PNG, so it preserves any transparency. And we've got other image types we can select from. Let's open that. It will ask us what plane we want to put it on. And I want the XY plane. We can see the cube here is pointing downwards. That's highlighted at the top. And we look at our cube over here. We'll want it from looking down. So we're looking down on the object. Hit OK. Our image has been placed on screen. But it is not to scale. We next have to find an element on here that is to scale. I know that this circle is 70 millimeters in diameter. I'll be using that to scale. To do that, we'll use this icon here, Scalar Image Plane. If we click it, it will ask us to set the distance. So in here, I'm going to put 70 millimeters, and then it's going to ask us to select the first point. Zoom into the image, and we need to click once. So I'm going to click once, around about here. And this is just to get a rough scale, because we'll be filling in the other geometry in a moment. And once I've clicked, it's going to ask us to select the second point. Now you may get a red line. So you can see that red line there. I've just tweaked the viewpoint to be in a different place and I can select 
where I want this to place. So I'm going to go from the top looking down and I can select there. If you don't see that red line, we can still select and then select the next one. It just makes our life a little easier and click. So we've got that in position. Another reason why you wouldn't see that red line if I click on this image and come down to our placement, open this up and into the position, open this up. Then if I just change the Z axis, you can see that's moved and that's because it's behind it. So if this is right up above the Z or whatever axis you're looking at, we can just drop that and you'll see that line there. So click top again. Now we need to select an image plane. So we come over and select it. It's already selected. Just click it if it isn't. And if we look down towards the X and Y size of this image, if I hit OK, you'll see that change. So this is now in the correct scale. We can check that by using the measure tool, measure distance, and come in and select. And you're probably seeing another issue here is that our mouse pointer is, well, crosshairs is white. We can't really see what's going on. If I add some angle to that, you can see that's 69.25. And that's about right. So I'm happy with that. So I'm click on the distance and hit delete. It doesn't have to be totally accurate. It's just get us in that ballpark. Now we're ready to use the sketcher to trace this image. So come over to the sketch workbench from the drop down, and we're going to create a new sketch. Now make sure this image plane isn't selected, otherwise it's going to attach to the image plane. But if it is, and we go up to sketch, create sketch, then it's not the end of the world. We can change this to don't attach, and hit OK. So create a new sketch. It's going to ask us what plane to place it upon, and we want it on the XY plane, so the top plane. I'm looking at here, and hit OK. The sketch will be created, but you can see that our image isn't centered. In this case, we come over to the Model tab, click on the image plane, come down to the placement, come down to the position, open that up, and start nudging the X and Y until we are in the center. And I'm gonna say that's about right there. Now at this point, you may want to start sketching from down here. The center point is where we're going to constrain everything to. And it's, this is important because we want to know how to create this. We have some symmetry across the image. I know for a fact that this circle is 70 millimeters. So I'm going to use that as a point of constraint. So I'm going to constrain the circle that starts to this center point. To do that, I'm going to come over to this circle click it and come down. Now, straight away, you're going to see an issue. We've got a white crosshairs. So when I start entering this white, we lose it. What we can do is come over to the model, click on the image plane, and then click on view. You'll find a number of options in here. So we've got bounding box, display, mode, etc. We come down, we've got transparency and we can drop this transparency. By using the up and down arrow keys, we can adjust the value, something like 36. Therefore, we can see our crosshairs. And that means that we've got a better chance of sketching this easily. The other way to do it is to come into the Edit, Preferences, and on the left-hand side, you'll notice Sketcher icon because we've opened up the Sketcher, so it'll be added to our preferences at that time. Click that and we've got colors. We can change the cursor crosshairs. We may need to also change the edge because under constrained is white. We've got a white image. But I'm going through the transparency method first. So let's just cancel out of that. That starts sketching. So I've got the circle geometry selected. I've got the auto constraints on. So in Edit controls, we've got the auto constraints on, means when I hover over that point, we get the coincident constraint, and you can match those to the toolbar here. So I'm coincident to that center point, we click once to attach it, and then bring this out and click when we get to the circle. As you can see, we're not fully centered with this circle, but that's fine. I'm gonna hit the right mouse button or hit escape to get the mouse pointer back and click on this circle and add a diameter to it. Drop this down, 
strain diameter and we'll constrain that to 70 millimeters. We can see that the sketch has gone green, bright green, so it's fully constrained. And now coming over to the model and clicking on the image plane, I can see that we've got ticks going across here. So I'm just going to go edit, refresh, just to refresh those. Then come down to the data tab and I'm going to look at the position in the placement. And I'm going to start moving this into position. So we're looking for a near enough fit, so best fit, because we know this dimension and we'll be going off the other circles in here and closely fit them to our model. I'm going to say that we're centered now and I'm going to come back over to the tasks and we're going to start sketching in some other elements. So I'm looking around and looking at the other elements and looking at these circles. So these are plain circles. We're going to hit a little bit of an issue with this because we need to fully constrain the sketch. So let's add a circle. Click on the circle, come down, click around about the middle and bring the circle out. We can zoom in to start to position this. I hit escape or press the mouse right button to get the pointer back and start manipulating this into position. Once it's in position, click the circle and we'll add a constraint. And I'm going to go for a diameter constraint again. 10.14, I'm going to drop this to 10 millimeters and that is in there. But it's not fully constrained. And you can see that because it's in white and our sketch has gone from bright green to more transparent green. So we need to sort the constraints out. We could use this point and this point and use height and length constraints in there, but we're going to have to do that for all the other circles. So I'm going to constrain this via something called construction geometry. Now construction geometry allows you to add, say, a line, and I'm going to connect up this line to the center point, coincident constraint, and the center point of this arc, like so. And then it allows you to say, if I'm looking at these, then I can constrain with an angle between here. So these are evenly spaced. So we'll have a 360 degree angle divided by three, which is 120. And we can use this one and say another line here, connected up to a circle. So let's get our circle in. So that's center point like that and we'll create a line that connects up coincident to that center and coincident to the center here. Now what we can do is take this line and this line and place an angle between them. So using the angle constraint, constraint angle and type in 120. If we don't want to do the maths, what we can do is 360 and then use the slash for divide and free and that will give us the 120 there and we'll just manipulate these into position and you can see we can place these like so another thing that I'm going to do is take these two lines and make them of equal length using the quality constraint so select those two hit the equals that means we can come in and out by using this point and we move them in and out and side to side so we can get those into position. You may not be able to match these exactly to your sketch because we may have picture slight at slight angles, so the perspective is not quite right. I'm just gonna take these two, these circles, take the one that's got the constraint first, and then this one, and hit equality across those. So this one is equal to here, so that's locked down now. I'm just gonna get one of them into position. Let's do the other one at the top. So use a circle. And I'm not going to place it upon this line. I'm just going to place it by the side. I'm going to make sure I don't touch that line. Otherwise, I'll get an auto constraint. You can see that auto constraint, which is a tangent constraint. I just want to create the circle. And I've hit escape, which is not good. Let's double click the sketch and come in again. If you hit escape and you haven't got anything selected and you've still got your mouse pointer, available rather than a constraint pointer, then it's going to exit the sketch. 
So now I've got that circle, I'm just going to add a line between it, this point and connect up to that point and hit the right mouse button. And we need an angle constraint between this line and this line. Again, using the angle of 120. And let's make this line and this line equal as well. So we've got a quality across there. If I take this and turn it, you can see they're turning now and going in and out. So we can place those in the correct position. I'm going to put some height along this line. Well, first of all, I'm going to add a vertical constraint to keep that nice and vertical. I could attach it to this vertical axis, but I'm just going to place a vertical constraint in there. And we'll just get these into position like so. And that will do me. I can see that I've got a slight skew on my reference image, which is fine. So now I can place some length in here. With this one, we'll just use the vertical distance, but we can't use vertical distance if we're selecting, say, this one. We would have to use the distance constraint, this one here, constraint and distance. I'm just going to use the vertical distance for this one. And we've got 54.62, so I'm going to go 54.5 in there. So we've got our constraint in there. Let's move that across, move that out of the way. And everything inside has gone green. So if I hide that image plane, we can see we've got everything inside there going green. This one isn't constrained there. So I thought it was a bit cloudy, a cloudy green. So we need to constrain this one. So this needs an equality between these two. Let's make sure that we don't have two things selected on the left hand side. So this one and this one. This should turn bright green right now. Equals. So everything is constrained. If I come to the task and hit close, then this is not a valid sketch at the moment. We don't want these lines. These are construction geometry. So to change those to construction geometry, we can click on this line, this line, and this line, and use the toggle construction geometry. Also available on sketch, sketch geometries and toggle construction geometry. That's gone blue now. It's a lighter blue because it's constrained. If I close that, you see those have gone. So construction geometry is basically just a skeleton. If I had nothing selected and selected this icon here, you'll see these turn blue. So if you see that, all you have to do is select the icon again and that will turn back to normal construction. So this toggles this toolbar to from construction mode or toggles the selected constraint to construction mode. That's bringing back our reference image. Pressing the space bar on that. We're now going to add the arcs. So I'm going to come into one of the sketches, one of the sides that is most accurate, and go for the top. And we're going to add an arc. So using the arc here, we've got a endpoint and rim point. I'm using the center and endpoint. And we'll place the mouse pointer coincident to this point. So we've got the coincident constraint, click, and we'll get a circle. This is an arc, but we'll get a line. So this is where the arc actually starts. So I'm going to start it here. And we can line up the circle with that edge to see where we will be able to start. So I can see this arc starts vanishing into the reference image here. So our arc is going to be about here to here. I'm going to make this arc using this point and this point and using this line as the reference. So click that last, make that symmetrical to there. It's over constrained, so we've got a problem there. So if we zoom out and use the task, you can see we've got redundant constraint number 15. If I click that, it will highlight it in green. So we can see we've got this vertical constraint, which we're using symmetry, we don't need that. So we can hit delete. It's already highlighted and we've got that in there. So that's symmetrical to that point. 
I'm going to click on this arc and use a radius constraint. So drop this down and constrain the radius. And we'll say about 11 millimeters there. Now I've got the arc, we can start putting in some line geometry. So click the line, and I'm going to follow this edge. So click on that and follow this edge down, like so. Hit escape, and I want this tangent to this arc, because at the moment, if I move this, we can see the more it's not tangent. We need fluid arc connection to this. So click this line and this arc. Look over to the left and we've got void redundant auto constraints checked. So this will come in handy when we're creating geometry that requires removal of auto constraints. So I'm going to use constraint tangent. We get this sketch of constraint substitution, which is OK. So now this point, which was coincidence, has been substituted with a tangent constraint. And we've got our line in place comes all the way down to about here. Now this looks like an arc, but what we're going to do is basically do the same what we did here over here. So just sketch that in there using the arc again, using this point. And we'll come out and just place this arc in quickly, like so. So we can show you how to actually manipulate that without having problems. Now, how do I make this symmetrical to, say, this line here? So I want these points, so that's not symmetrical, we want it about over here. We can do that by clicking both these points and then clicking the construction geometry and using symmetric, symmetry constraint there. That's symmetric across there. Should have really done that on the top one, but we used basically this vertical line, which doesn't matter, it still works. Now we can manipulate that into position. And don't worry if it's not a good fit, it's close enough that we can just carry on and finish our model. Next thing, again, is the line coming out over here. And we'll make this arc and this line Click both of them, make them tangent to each other. Get the substitution again, okay that. Now, I want to take the radius, because I've got a radius in here somewhere. Where is it? I think it's in here, there's the radius there. So I want to take this arc and this arc and use an equality, so those radiuses are the same. Also I want to take this line and this line and make those equal. So we're beginning to build up our shape. Question is, is there an arc between these? And I think there is a slight arc there, so let's add an arc. And this time I'm going to use the endpoint and rim point arc. So I'm going to click this point and this point and just add a small arc there. Hit escape to get the mouse pointer back or your right mouse button and select the arc and one of the edges and use the tangency. Yeah, okay, so that's tangent. And then do the same over here, this one and this one and tangent. Okay, so now we've got a nice smooth line between those. And we've got the equality so we can move that into place. So I can move it about there. And that's looking nice. So I'm going to use this arc and come over and use a radius constraint on that. And that's round that up to 80. So we've got a radius constraint across there. So what we've done is create a number of arcs and radiuses across those. Now, as I said, we could just do, say, this side and create mirrors or polar patterns or, or so across here, but we're, we're doing it all in the sketch. Let's repeat this process all the way around. So let's quickly do that. And I'm just going to lay down an arc there and a line that connects up this point and this point. And I'm going to do this quickly. 
and this point and oh, we haven't added our arc in here so I'm going to drop that one there and we'll create another line here comes out here and place an arc in there this point and this point and create a little arc there and we need a line as well so just quickly done those around there and we'll add our arc in here so come up to this and drop it down to the center and endpoint arc and these come in a bit and hover over that center point come out and what I'm going to do is this time hover over this point connect up bring this right the way around and hover over this point and we've got quincy constraint and connect up those are already connected saves us a bit of time let's bring this down but you can see it's a bit all over the place at the moment so we're missing our tangencies so this arc this line tangent see how that's straightened up there so it's nice fluid arc and we'll do the same over this side and create our tangency and okay that we've got symmetry across here so we can take these two points and then the last point or line that we use is symmetrical across there so this line here our construction geometry and use the symmetry constraint so that's all in symmetry let's make sure that we've got tangency across these two tangency okay and same for this one tangency okay and same for these two tangency and these two and finally these two right we've gone all right we've gone over constraint so we have an issue here saying redundant constraint is 39 so if we click 39 we can see what a tangency constraint up here which is redundant that one there that's delete that and that's because we had two tangency constraints so that's gone now that's all good and we need to make well we've got these arcs going all the way around here so we need to also make this arc equal as well so we can take an arc and this arc and use the equality These two lines, in matter of fact, all of these lines here and these two need equality as well. Got redundant constraint there because we've already added it somewhere. So we just click on that, hit delete. That neatens up our constraints. So if we add multiple constraints and then we add them again, it just cleans them up for us. And these three arcs also need equality across them so we've almost finished our sketch but it's not fully constrained let's have a look at what it looks like hit close well it's it's getting there so we're getting our sketching down our tracing down let's come back into the sketch and let's start adding because we've done basically a few data constraints here we have radius we have a radius somewhere else where's the radius there we've got a radius there as well which was this one so you can see it pointing to that and this one here we can see that we have you can see the arrow there so I bring this down and you can see a little arrow in here so I'll highlight that and see that little arrow the little yellow arrow here that shows you what arc it's using so that one there so what we need to do is create length a distance in this one 
and that will constrain everything because we've got equality across these lines and this is the only one that's not constrained because we've got our radius constraint here we've got a radius constraint in here we said that all these arcs are equal and we've got a radius constraint down here what's this one connected to so that's connected so you can see the arrows connected to that arc there that one there everything's constrained except for these lines but they have an equality constraint all the way across them so the minute we add a constraint to one of these lines it's the only one that's left so distance across there because we can't use a height or length and we'll just okay that we're fully constrained let's close out of that now and we sketched our first part just click on the image press the space bar and there it is we've only got a sketch so we can use that in the part design or the part let's use this say in the part design come over to the part design and we'll create a body come over to the model we can see the body has been added but the sketch isn't inside it so if I clicked on this sketch and tried to pad this then it cannot use the sketch because it's not inside the body so what we have to do is take that sketch and drop it inside the body simple as that now when we use the pad we get a valid pad so we've come far through our journey so far we've learned how to use the part design the sketcher and now the image workbench we're going to continue in our next video sketching and tracing with the image workbench but this time on multiple planes so we're going to be looking at creating an object that we need multiple reference images for through this we'll learn much more about sketching and part design before moving away into other areas of FreeCAD. So I hope you enjoy these tutorials and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you're seeing please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.